Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike Smith, a fund manager based in Sydney, Australia. Today's video, we're gonna be covering off why Warren Buffett bought TSMC or Taiwan Semiconductor. So we're gonna cover four main things, a little bit about the company, why Warren Buffett thinks that it's cheap, and uh, we all remember that he's a value investor, the latest earnings call from TSMC, why did he buy so much of the stock, and what are the long-term prospects? Established in Taiwan in 1987, Taiwan Semiconductor, or TSM as the ticket code, or TSMC for short, was the world's first dedicated semiconductor foundry. Since then, it has evolved from a private company to one of the largest publicly listed businesses in the world. That journey began with a listing on the Taiwan Stock Exchange in 1993, before becoming the first Taiwanese company to list on the New York Stock Exchange in 1997. Ever since, the company has consolidated its position as a leader in the semiconductor contract manufacturing and design, with customers spanning the likes of Apple, Nvidia, AMD, MediaTek, and Intel, and a global market share in excess of 50%. Among its most impressive achievements, TSMC became the first foundry to develop seven nanometer and five nanometer production capabilities, while also being the first market for the commercialization of mass volume extreme ultraviolet lithography technology. For all its success over the years, TSM has recently traded near pre-pandemic prices. We have good reason to believe the stock is an extremely compelling buy at current levels, and if it's fundamentals aren't indicative of its outlook, look no further than a recent major investment by none other than Warren Buffett. Now why is TSMC trading so cheap? Well, during the first 18 months of the pandemic, Taiwan Semiconductor was a central player in the midst of a global semiconductor shortage. That helped propel its share price to one record after another, at one stage trading with a valuation more than double its pre-pandemic market cap. Much of that surge was sparked by unprecedented demand for semiconductor chips from consumers industry and businesses pivoting to consumer electronics en masse, and extensive supply chain bottlenecks also causing pent-up demand for key componentry. Since late last year, however, some of this pent-up demand has started to dissipate. The twin threat of elevated inflation and concerns about a recession have weighed on sentiment towards semiconductor stocks. It hasn't helped that some of TSM's peers have also seen demand for their chips soften and broader investor appetite for tech stocks has waned as interest rates rise. In the case of TSM, it has also had to contend with risks associated with souring relationships between China and Taiwan, as the threat of conflict became a central concern once the war broke out in Ukraine. Earnings tell us a strong story. While there may be concerns in the broader semiconductor industry, TSMC is showing little signs of being affected. In fact, its most recent third quarter earnings paint a different picture. One where the company's operations appear to be performing well on a number of fronts. At a headline level, the company reported a 36% increase in revenue compared with the same quarter last year, delivering $20.2 billion in sales. Meanwhile, its earnings catapulted higher, up from $1.08 per share a year ago to $1.79 per share in the recent quarter. Profits at a headline level were up 80%, the strongest growth in two years. Beneath these figures, however, another metric was arguably even more impressive. Gross profit margins expanded by 910 basis points to 60.4% which is a telling gauge as to how the company has been able to boost earnings. Earlier this year, gross margins were at 55.6%, so the increase has been methodical in the wake of rising input costs. Among its core products, shipments of five nanometer chips represented approximately 28% of total wafer revenue, while the seven nanometer product made up 26% of sales in the segment. This highlights the extent to which its innovative edge and first to market approach has given it an upper hand, particularly with industry leading technology. As far as the company's outlook, custom demand for five nanometer technology is expected to ramp up, which provides a promising sign for margins to be maintained at this heightened level. Management expects growth profit margins between 59.5 to 61.5 in Q4. Pleasingly, the business expects to finish the year on a strong note, forecasting between $19.9 and $20.7 billion in revenue and $75 billion for the full year, which is equivalent to 32% growth. This comes despite the headwinds that have impacted areas of the semiconductor industry, including easing demand for personal computers and smartphones after the boom period of the last couple of years. In fact, TSMC expects the overall industry to decline next year, but still sees its business growing strongly. That's because more advanced technologies are better suited to evolving high-performing computer products. And needs for applications such as electric vehicles, data centers, and the Internet of Things, or IoT for short. It is these areas that have been a strong pillar for the company in comparison with some of its peers, 
and they are also trends at the early stage of a paradigm shift in growth. That is to say, we expect ongoing levels of strong growth across these channels and with a market share above 50% versus next best Samsung at just 13%. TSMC can leverage these opportunities to their full potential. Now let's take a look at Buffett's big play here. Fresh documents filed with the Securities Exchange Commission show that Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, has taken a big stake in TSMC. Clearly bullish about the semiconductor stock's long-term outlook. According to its recent 30-year filing, Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway purchased some 60 million shares in the chipmaker across the third quarter of the year or equivalent to $4.1 billion or 1.4% of the company. Any investment by the legendary investor is worthy of attention due to his highly successful track record. However, this particular stake is even more interesting than usual. For starters, based on the size of the purchase, it was Berkshire's largest new stock investment during the September quarter. On top of that, the stock is now among the conglomerate's largest holdings. More interestingly, this acquisition represents a deviation from Buffett's normal preferences. For much of its existence, Berkshire has largely avoided investing in tech stocks or limited investments to a select number of high quality tech stocks like Apple, which has become its largest holding. For years, Buffett's value investing approach and disagreeable view on tech sector valuations has prompted the well-known investor to steer clear of the sector. Some names have been added over the years, including HP and Snowflake, but by and large, Buffett warned investors about the difficulties in understanding the operations and valuations of many tech businesses. Instead, the conglomerate has often favored areas such as utilities, infrastructure, railway companies. With Apple, the benchmark tech investment in Berkshire's portfolio, the decision to heavily back TSMC expresses a supreme vote of confidence. For a conservative investor, Buffett's decision also eases some of the concerns about the risks that TSMC faces. For example, the geopolitical risks associated with China and Taiwan, trade disputes between China and the US, and even the effects of inflation and slowing economic growth. With decades of experience and a background that includes investing through all sorts of market events, it is clear Buffett has a positive view on the importance of the chip sector and TSMC's role as a leading player. Even from a value investing perspective, there is good reason to suggest that Berkshire has found a growth stock that is effectively trading at a value stock due to perceived headwind. The price to earnings ratio for TSM is just shy of 15. Compared with its average over the last five years, which is a P of about 23, and the S&P 500 P ratio of about 19, the stock is trading at a major discount. As it is, Berkshire is not the only fund loading up on TSMC, with 13F filings showing the percentage of ownership among funds increased in the September quarter by 47 basis points to 16.76% of the company. Approximately 73 funds hold the stock in their top 10 holdings, and a total of 1,241 funds have exposure to the stock. Value catalysts into the long term. Buffett's endorsement is undoubtedly influenced by not only the unfolding trends across the industry, that favor high-end processes for ever-increasing advanced applications, but also TSMC's pipeline. This pipeline underscores why, at current prices, the stock is a compelling buying opportunity. The company's highest profile client, Apple, is set to reduce its dependent on Asian procured chips, instead opting to source chips from the US. Currently, a facility is being built in Arizona to cater to the shift in demand, and TSMC, as Apple's exclusive supplier, has been confirmed as the operator of this facility. Sensing a shift in industry dynamics, TSMC is planning a second facility in the US to expand production capabilities outside of Taiwan. Elsewhere, the company has commenced production of its three nanometer chips this quarter, providing a lucrative near-term channel to diversify revenue. TSMC expects to extract up to 15% more performance from the N3 over the N5, with a power reduction of between 25 and 30%, and logic upgrades thanks to a near doubling in transistor density. With longer design cycles and an industry factor at play, quality control and execution are key. And on that front, TSMC is hitting all the right notes. With the company's earnings going a long way towards showcasing its resilience as a market leader, a bright outlook thanks to internal developments and trends occurring at an end user level and what we consider a very cheap valuation. It is not hard to see why Warren Buffett has added TSMC to the top holdings in Berkshire's portfolio. Now there you have it. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. There's a link below if you've made it this far with the full article so you can read through it at a later date. See you in the next video.